Hello mga kaagham! Welcome back sa quarter 4, week 1 ng ating science lesson. Ito ang Changes Due to Earthquake and Volcanic Eruption. Muli ito si Teacher Neri at huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe, like and share kung bago ka sa YouTube channel na ito. For the objectives of our lesson, una, describe earthquake and volcanic eruption. Pangalawa, name the changes of the Earth's surface after earthquake and volcanic eruption. Eruption. So, earthquake. Ano nga ba ang earthquake? Tama! Lindol! An earthquake is the shaking of the ground. It happens when the crustal plates move. As these plates move, some parts of the earth's crust are pushed toward each other or away from each other. Kagaya na lang ng napanood natin sa short video clips na ito. Kung saan, lumindol, Yan, gumalawang lupa at nahadi ito sa dalawang malalaking ipak. Sila ay nagkahiwalay. Ang tawag sa phenomena na yan ay earthquake. So there are two types of earthquake. These are the volcanic earthquake and the tectonic earthquake. For example, volcanic earthquake happens when a strong volcanic eruption. So ibig sabihin, Kung ang lindol ay naganap dahil na-trigger siya sa pagputok ng vulkan, ang tawag sa lindol na yon ay volcanic earthquake. Yung sumunod naman ay ang tectonic earthquake. It is caused by the movement of the Earth's crust o yung paggalaw ng tinatawag natin na crustal plate. A tectonic earthquake may occur above the ground or beneath the ocean. So, ito ay nangyayari sa kalupaan, sa ibabaw ng lupa, o di kaya naman ay sa ilalim ng dagat. So, talakayin pa natin ng mas mabuti. So, a tectonic earthquake, sabi ko kanina, it can happen above the ground or beneath the ocean. So, when a strong earthquake or shaking of the ground, it can loosen the soil and rocks and can cause disastrous landslides. So, destruction of properties and lives as well as surroundings are evident kapag may strong tectonic earthquake. So, kung ang earthquake ay nangyari malapit sa bundok, nagre-resulta ito sa landslide o yung pagbubo ng lupa. Paano naman kung nangyari yung earthquake sa bodies of water or malapit sa dagat? So, it may cause the water to rush up, then a huge surface waves are created and can reach a nearby coast. So, this is known as tsunami. So, narinig nyo na marahil ang tsunami, no? Tsunami is a Japanese word for bay or harbor wave. So, ito yung mga naglalakihan at malahiganting alon na usually mas matataas sila sa mga gusali at lubhang mapaminsala. So, nangyayari yan kung ang tectonic earthquake ay nangyayari malapit sa dagat o sa ilalim ng dagat. So, dumako naman tayo sa volcanic eruption. Paano ba ito nangyayari? So, when tectonic plates collide, nagbanggaan, big rocks underground deform. Ang malalaking tipak ng bato ay nayuyupi o nadideform and trigger a build-up of temperature na nagre-resulta sa mataas o mainit na temperatura at malakas na pressure. Kapag nangyari ito, matutunaw yung mga, yung mga rock, mapuproduce yung tinatawag natin na magma. So, yung molten rock o yung magma ay naroon sa tinatawag natin na magma chamber. So, nasa ng magma chamber? Siyempre, nasa loob ng volcano. Kapag hindi niya nakaya ang matinding init at pressure, hahanap siya ng paraan para i-release ang magma. So, lalabas siya sa tinatawag na crater o yung bibig ng vulkan sa taas, yung butas. Ang tawag dyan ay crater. So, when this happen, volcano erupts. So, nagaganap na ang pagsabog ng vulkan. So, ano yung ilalabas niya? So, maglalabas siya ng lava together with gases, rocks, and ashes. So, magma siya kung siya ay nasa loob. Pag nakalabas na siya, ito ay magiging lava. So, syempre kapag ka pumuputok ang vulkan, kasunod nun, nagkakaroon ng mga mahihinang serya ng dito. 
So next, sa Region 4A or mas kilala sa tawag na Calabarzon, marami daw mga volcano sa atin. Kabilang na dyan, yung uh, Banahaw na nasa boundary ng Laguna at Quezon at yung famous na Taal Volcano naman na nasa province ng Batangas. So last, last, last year, ito ay pumutok noong January 2020. At ngayong taon, uh, nagkaroon din ng uh, volcanic activity ang Taal Volcano noong March 26, 2022. So, according sa Feebox, maikakategorya ang mga vulkan sa Pilipinas bilang active at saka inactive volcano. So, ang Taal at Banahaw, maging ang Mayon, ay mga active volcanoes. Bakit? Kasi meron silang mga recorded history ng pagto. Samantalang ang inactive volcanoes naman, eto yung mga vulkan na hindi pumuto sa mahigit isandaang taon. Kaya sila naging inactive. Okay. So, dako naman tayo sa layers of the earth. No? Para malaman natin kung uh, saan banda nagaganap ang earthquake. Ang ating mundo ay nahahati sa tatlong bahagi. Ito yung yan, yung core. Sumunod ay yung mantle. At yung manipis sa ibabaw ay tinatawag natin na crust. So, ito. Crust, mantle, core. So, yung crust, ito yung kinalalagyan ng ating uh, mga bahay. Kinatatayuan ng mga gusali. Yan. Just below the crust, ito yung yellow part. Ito yung crustal plate. Nasa ibabaw siya ng asthenosphere. Yan. Kapag itong uh, layer na ito, yan, o yung plate na ito ay gumalaw, nagkakaroon ng lindol. So, yan siya. Nandito ba? Dito nagsisimula yung lindol sa part na ito kung saan kapag ito'y gumalaw, yan, magkakaroon ng tectonic earthquake. Yan. However, paano naman yung volcanic uh, earthquake? So, sa ibabaw ng Nang, sa ibabaw ng crustal plates, meron diyang magma chamber, no? Yan. Kapag na, uh, nabuo ang matinding init at pressure, yan ay sasabog. Magiging dahilan upang gumalaw din yung tinatawag natin na, na plates. Pero, ang nag-trigger ng paggalaw ng plates ay yung pagputok ng vulkan. So, kaya, volcanic earthquake. Okay, next. So, eto yung uh, closer illustration niya para mas maintindihan ninyo. Uh, for your questions, pwede nyo uh, i-comment down below at susubukan kong sagutin ang inyong mga katanungan. Okay. So, dako na tayo sa learning task number one. So, meron ditong article, The Roaring Earth. O, babasahin nyo lang kung ano ang nilalaman ng article na yan at pagkatapos ay sasagutin ninyo ang nasa iba ba. The effects of the earthquake to environment or ecosystem. So, ano ba yung epekto ng lindol sa ating kapaligiran? So, I have provided five uh, answers but you may also add uh, another answer aside from this. You may interview someone who have experienced uh, uh, earthquake, no? Para mas maganda. And then, isulat nyo kung ano yung magiging response ng mga ma Okay, next. Ito yung karugtong niya. So, another article, which is volcanic eruption. The first recorded account of Mayon's eruption were made by the Franciscan priest during the 18th century. So, question is, so give at least three effects of volcanic eruption to environment or ecosystem. So, I have provided four uh, answers, but you may also add another base from what you have read in the article 4 of your science team. Okay, so I'm giving you enough time to complete this task. Next is the learning task number 2. Describe the different changes on the Earth's surface as a result of the earthquake and volcanic eruption. So, meron ditong dalawang pictures. Yan, pagmas na ng larawan. So, matapos ang isang lindol, ano yung naging resulta? O ano yung naging effect nito sa atin? So, you may uh, 
observe the picture and try to answer or give your answer on the space provided below of, uh, of your science link. So I have provided five answers. Again, you may also add another. Okay. So example, dito ay, there is a formation of landforms, cracks and holes may appear, mountains may collapse, roads are not passable to, to vehicle, and houses near the sea may be washed out by a tsunami. Okay, next. So after volcanic eruption, what is the devastating effect on the on the land or on the environment. So, I have given three answers already. Pero, pwede pa rin kayong mag-add ayon sa inyong pagkakaalam kung kayo ay nakaranas na ng pagputok ng vulkan. O, pwede kayong mag-interview ng mga taong nakaranas na ito. Okay. Sa engagement activities naman, I have given uh to you, the learning task number four, answer the following question in relation to the information learned from the lesson. So, pwede nyo uling uh, panoorin yung lesson. And then from that, you may answer the three questions here. Why does the Philippines experience both tectonic and volcanic earthquakes? Bakit ba natin sila nararanasan? Two, how would you relate the changes of the earth's surface to the earthquake activities and volcanic eruption? And number three, is it possible for both earthquake and volcanic eruption to happen simultaneously? So, ayan, there, there are already answers here which you can uh, study. You may pause and study it for a while. So, you may also uh, read another information from our science textbook which is Science Beyond Borders. And then, for learning task number five, gagawa kayo ng mga photo collage kung saan nagpapakita ng iba't ibang changes or pagbabago na nangyayari sa tuwing may uh, volcanic eruption o di kaya ay earthquake. So, I have given an example here. You may also provide your own. And then, for learning task number 7, subukan po natin mag-design ng emergency preparedness kit. So, I have given my own examples. You can also provide your own. Ano ba ang mahahalagang bagay na dapat nilalaman? ng ating preparedness kit. Gumawa kayo ng inyong sarili. Okay. And then for our assessment, you are going to answer 1 to 10. So, you will only just identify if the statement is true or false. And then for 6 and 10, write check if it is a good practice for disaster preparedness and X if not. So, you may pause this video for a while for, ano, for you to study further. So, once again, learning is fun and easy with Teacher Neri. For your questions and feedback, feel free to comment down below. So, wag mahiya ha. Malay nyo, masagot ko ang inyong mga tanong. So, thank you for watching.